This is the new 2023 Ford F-150 Raptor R, and it is, quite simply, the pinnacle of the high-performance pickup truck. The regular F-150 Raptor is fine, with 450 horsepower and 510 pound-feet from its turbo V6, but this has a supercharged V8 with 700 horsepower and 640 pound-feet of torque. The Raptor R costs around $100. $110,000. It'll do 0 to 60 in the high three second range, and today I'm going to review it and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this Shelby Super Snake, which sold for $60,000, this fantastic green Audi RS5, which brought $50,000, and this wonderful Rivian R1S, which sold for $100,000. $20,000. We've done great with Rivians on cars and bids. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, the 1980s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. With daily auctions and great selection and free listings, check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the Raptor R under the hood. And yes, I've lost my voice. We're gonna do this anyway. Okay, so the standard Raptor has a turbo V6, 450 horsepower, 510 pound-feet, like I said. This, the Raptor R, just one additional letter, supercharged V8, 700 horsepower, 640 pound-feet of torque, an increase of 250 horsepower and more than 100 pound-feet. And it's cooler than that because this is the powertrain from the Shelby GT500, which is one of the coolest high-performance sports cars on the market today. They took that powertrain and stuck it in a pickup truck, which is just awesome. Now, apparently there are some changes to the Raptor R's supercharged V8 compared to the GT500's. For example, they recalibrated the supercharger pulley in order to allow for more low-end torque, which is more beneficial for a larger vehicle and for off-roading. And the Raptor R has more air intake volume, presumably just because it has a much larger front end, and so air can come into the engine in a greater volume. But generally speaking, this is the 5.2 supercharged V8 from the GT500, and it's just awesome that they stuck that into a pickup truck. Now, I'm going to go through all the quirks and features of the Raptor R, but I do want to talk briefly about the obvious comparison between the Raptor R and the Ram TRX, which is Ram's crazy high-performance supercharged V8 pickup truck. That has 702 horsepower versus 700 here, and 650 pound-feet versus 640 here. So they are essentially identical. The Ram has a little bit of an advantage, but the F-150 is apparently a little lighter. Not by much. Both of these trucks are incredibly heavy. The TRX is around 6,400 pounds, and this is just under 6,200 pounds. So it's a little bit lighter than the TRX, which means it should be maybe a little bit quicker. Now, Throttle House, another great car YouTube channel, has done a drag race between the Raptor R and the TRX, and they are basically neck and neck in most drag races. So these are both really quick, really high-performance pickup trucks with very similar acceleration, which, by the way, like I said, 0 to 60 in the high three-second range in a massive full-size pickup truck. And by the way, while I'm on the subject of the powertrain, in case you were wondering about fuel economy, the EPA has rated this at 10 miles per gallon in the city, 15 miles per gallon on the highway, and just 12 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving. This is the exact opposite of efficient. And as for pricing, this truck is tremendously expensive. A standard Raptor starts around $78,000, but that's before options, and there are a lot of options that you can and want to add to a regular Raptor. Fine. A standard TRX starts around $84,000, again, before options, and there are a lot that you can add. This truck has no options, except you can choose the sunroof and the paint color, but that's it. Otherwise, these are all equipped the same with a sticker price of around $110,000 vastly more expensive than a regular Raptor or a TRX, which is usually equipped in the mid-$90,000 range with options. So this is
is a lot of money, but also a lot of truck. But while the performance is amazing and the power numbers are incredible and the price tag is huge, probably the biggest surprise to me about the Raptor R is that it's relatively subtle. Now, you look at this truck, giant orange thing that fills the entire screen, and you're thinking that is the furthest thing on the planet from subtle. What the hell are you talking about? But it's subtle compared to the regular Raptor. Despite the fact that this truck is $40,000 more expensive than a base Raptor, has 250 more horsepower, it's kind of hard to tell it apart from the standard Raptor, unless you know what you're looking for. So let me take you through the subtle exterior differentiation between this and the regular basic Raptor. Now, probably the easiest way to tell apart the Raptor R from the standard Raptor is a little subtle change they've made to the exterior badging. You have Raptor back here, but you can see the final R in Raptor is red-orange instead of the same color as the rest of the badge. Basically, they're trying to signal that it's saying Raptor R with that last R being orange-red. And there are a few of those orange R's on the outside of this truck. One back here, as you can see, one on the front grill where it's just the R, doesn't say Raptor R, but just R. Probably the most obvious one is on the side where you can see it says Raptor R in these massive side graphics. And again, the final R is orange red. Now, if you get the truck in this color, you will notice that the R actually matches the color of the truck. And so it looks like it says Rapto. If you go over to the other side of the truck, you will see that the first R is the one that's red, and so it looks like it says Aptor. <laughs> which seems a little weird. Now, if you get the truck in any other color than this, important to point out that R graphic on the side is still orange red. So if you have like a white truck or a blue truck, it'll more obviously say Raptor. But if you get the orange truck, it matches the color of the R. And so people will think you're driving an Aptor. <laughs> Now, another place you can see the Raptor R badge is on the hood power bulge, as you can see. Over on the driver's side, Raptor with the final R in red. And same deal over on the passenger side. Again, Raptor with the final R in red. And that means you get badges, all those subtle ones, on pretty much every angle of the truck. From the front, from the front sides, from the rear sides, and from the rear, you have a little red R to let you know this isn't the standard Raptor. But those aren't the only distinguishing features from the regular model. Another one is this hood bulge itself, which is higher and more aggressive than what you get on the standard Raptor. They call it a power dome, and it's larger to emphasize that this truck has more power. But probably my very favorite Raptor R subtle exterior change from the standard model comes on the graphics themselves. You look at them from far away and they just look like the standard graphics you would find on the standard Raptor. But if you look up close, you will see the graphic is comprised of little eights, 88888, eight, 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 to signify that this truck has a V8. And that's the same deal over on the side, on the rear fenders. You look at this graphic from far away and Ford says it's designed like this in order to look like the cracked surface of the desert with little cracks in between the graphics. Fine. But when you get close, you can see that all of the graphics are filled with little eights. Again, a subtle little mention that this truck has a V8, all the little eights in the graphics, which is a really cool Easter egg idea. But interestingly, and perhaps amazingly, at least in my mind, those are the only upgrades on the outside of this truck to let you know that this is the high-performance Raptor R instead of the standard model. All of the other stuff that most other automakers do to signify their ultimate performance model has been completely untouched. For instance, the grille and the entire front end design is exactly the same on the Raptor R as the standard Raptor, except for that little R badge in the corner. You don't have some widened, enlarged, opening here, some more aggressive front end bumpers, air intake, it's all the same. The wheels are exactly the same as the standard Raptor, which is another point that most automakers use to differentiate their high priced, high performance model. Not the case here. Same wheels as the standard Raptor. Even the exhaust tips are the same, which really surprised me. The Wrangler 392 is also a pretty subtle upgrade over the standard Wrangler, but it has quad exhaust, an instant giveaway. But this truck doesn't. Dual exhaust on both sides just like the regular Raptor. It looks exactly the same, but it doesn't sound the same. That's one other dead giveaway you're looking at a Raptor R. Take a listen to the exhaust in this truck. Now, 
Now, it's worth pointing out there are a few other differentiation points worth mentioning. One is the tires. The Raptor R comes standard with 37-inch off-road tires, massive. The standard Raptor comes with 35-inch off-road tires, but you can equip 37-inch tires on the standard Raptor as an option. So even though they're standard here and optional on the regular one, you can still get the big tires on the regular Raptor. Now, under the skin, a lot of the components are the same, but they have been beefed up a little bit for the Raptor R. For example, the suspension has been tweaked in order to accommodate the heavier engine up front, and the front axle has also been upgraded in order to accommodate extra torque that this vehicle has, thanks to its, well, extra torque. Those changes are under the skin. But as far as cosmetic stuff, it really does surprise me how similar this looks to a standard Raptor, and I really wonder if buyers are going to be unhappy about that. Most people who drop 110 grand on a pickup truck want everybody to know that they dropped 110 grand on a pickup truck, and here it's more if you know, you know. Surprisingly subtle compared to the regular model. But anyway, next let's move inside the Raptor R and talk through the differentiation points in here, which are actually even more limited than on the outside. One is the seats. You can see your Raptor R is stitched into the seats. Instead of just standard Raptor, you have that red R. That's really the only change on the seats. And then on the center console lid, again, Raptor R instead of Raptor. And that's it. Otherwise, the interior of this truck is pretty much identical to the standard Raptor. No other real major changes in here to let you know that you're driving a Raptor R until you step on the throttle and then you are reminded instantly. So let's talk about some of the performance features that this Raptor R has, most of which are shared with the standard Raptor, but they're still cool and they're still worth mentioning. For one thing, drive modes. You have a little dial down here that you can twist to adjust the drive mode that you're in. And this truck offers seven different drive modes, ranging from sport to tow and haul to rock crawl to Baja, seven different drive modes to choose from depending on precisely the type of driving that you're doing. You can also make even finer adjustments than that. Press this little steering wheel button on the steering wheel, as you can see, and you adjust the steering response. So you can choose like if you want sport steering that's quicker to respond or comfort steering that's a little lazier. You can select that individually and same deal with the suspension. You also have a button on the steering wheel for suspension that again you can select like comfort, sport, to dial it in precisely how you want. Also on the steering wheel you have a button to control the exhaust note and I have to say the changes in exhaust note for this truck are absolutely unbelievable. Take a listen to it in sport mode. Okay, so impressively loud, right? Now take a listen to it in quiet mode. That is truly insane, and in fact, if you keep the revs low in quiet mode, it's not that much louder than an electric vehicle. I truly mean that. So if you want to drive this thing early morning and not wake up your neighbors, stick it in quiet mode until you get out, and then you can change it over to sport mode. Or you can change it over to Baja mode, which also has quite a sound. Take a listen. Now, one other cool button on the steering wheel is the one marked R, and if you press that and hold it down, it allows you to save your current configuration of drive mode, steering mode, suspension mode, and exhaust mode. And that way, if you have some preferred configuration that you want to switch to, you can store it with just the push of that button, and you can get back to it every time you press that button, which is pretty cool. Then you don't have to go through each individual thing and change them all separately. Now, as far as cool buttons to control cool stuff in this interior, another one is on the center control stack. At the top, you have an image of a truck on a rough road. If you press that, it turns on trail control, which is essentially an off-road cruise control system. And basically what it does is it modulates the speed of the truck off-road on whatever terrain you're on, so you can basically just do the steering. It's a very impressive system. More and more off-roaders are offering it, and it's included on this truck to make off-roading that much easier. Also, another cool off-road performance feature in this truck is something called trail turn 
assist, which you can turn on here in the infotainment system. You turn this on, and if you're doing hairpin turns at low speeds off-road, the truck will automatically brake the inside rear wheel in order to make it easier to make the turn. That's actually really welcome because these massive tires give this truck a pretty huge turning circle. And so trail turn assist really does help to narrow that turning circle when you're off-road doing hairpin turns. It kind of makes this massive truck a little bit more nimble. But beyond the cool performance stuff and the Raptor R upgrades, worth talking through some of the other quirks and features in this interior, like for example, the fold down gear lever. If you press this button next to the gear lever, you can see it will automatically fold down, which is very unusual. What exactly do you do with that? The answer is you can unfold the center console and use it as a table. So with the gear selector in place, this wouldn't be possible, but once it's folded, you now have a table. You can write stuff here, you can use a laptop, I guess the thinking is you're on a job site, you might have paperwork to fill out, whatever, you have a table in the center console, which is actually a pretty good idea and certainly could come in handy. Now when you're done, you fold up your center console table, you press the button, the gear selector rises back up, and then you can use it to just shift back into gear like normal. Pretty cool idea. Now another thing I like in the front seats of this truck is a very accessible household style plug. You can see lift up this lid and there's a household power plug there where you can plug in basically everything. You don't have to figure out which charger you need. Although in this truck, there's so much available power, you never really have that problem. Above the household charger is a cigarette lighter style charger. And then in the center console, you have USB-C, USB-A, and a wireless charging pad for cell phones. So it doesn't matter what you want to use to charge. It's all supported in this truck, which is very nice to see and very convenient. Now, as for the infotainment system in this truck, I must say it is fantastic. You have a huge screen, very easy to see everything, and very responsive when you touch it, tap it, move around, very, very responsive to your touch like a smartphone, and it's very intuitive, simple, easy to figure out, fantastic infotainment screens as far as usability and size. And all of your climate controls are still physical buttons. You can see down low all the controls for temperature, heated seat, heated steering wheel, all that stuff is physical buttons not integrated in the screen, so no menu use in order to change your climate settings. Instead, the screen only has what I would call screen stuff, and it makes it very easy to use. I also like the fact that this infotainment screen shows two things at once. So as you can see, I'm touching stuff, adjusting stuff over on the left side, and it's showing me the map over on the right side. If I make the map the main part of the screen, then the right side changes to show music, and you can adjust what's on that second panel. If you don't want to see that, you want to see something else, it's pretty configurable. I like the fact that you have two different things displayed at once. You don't have to go between screens and you can configure what's showing which is pretty nice to see. Now also high praise for the gauge cluster in this truck which is the same basic situation. It's a full screen and it's pretty adjustable. You can especially adjust this center panel to show you basically everything you might want to see from your driver assist systems to like trip odometer stuff to your off-road features as you can see here. It's showing some off-road measurements that might be important to you in your Raptor while you're off-roading. The only drawback I have this gauge cluster screen is, it's not quite configurable enough. Yes, you can adjust what's in the center screen and you can play with a few more things, but I wish there was more full screen adjustability. For example, I wish you could have a full screen map in that gauge cluster like some cars offer, or I wish you could have a full screen, for example, a camera, which might actually be really useful when you're off-roading. I say this because when you go into Baja mode in this truck, the front camera automatically turns on in the center screen, which allows you to see if there's any obstacles you might be running over. This truck is very high up, and that camera makes it really easy to see if there's something in front of you. It would be really cool if that camera was integrated into the gauge cluster screen so it was directly in your field of vision, like you were almost looking directly in front of your truck, but unfortunately you can't do that. The gauge cluster is good, high resolution, configurable, but I think they could do a little bit more. Now, as for the driver assist technology in this truck, it has, of course, adaptive cruise control, so it'll slow down and speed up, and it has steering assist, so if you're on the freeway, the truck will basically basically steer, slow down, speed up, go around curves, do it all for you. The drawback here is that the steering wheel is not capacitive touch. And what that means is every 15 seconds, you're on the freeway with all the driver assist on, you're holding onto the steering wheel and it tells you, please touch the steering wheel. And it's like, I am. The only way you can make that warning go away is if you jiggle the steering wheel a little bit, which is annoying. Most cars now let you just touch the steering wheel. It can sense that you're touching the wheel and you don't have to jiggle it constantly. I feel like having to jiggle the wheel is definitely the old 
school version of driver assist, and it's not as good now that automakers are adopting capacitive touch wheels. And next up, we move on to the back seat in this truck, which is frankly absolutely huge. Pickup truck back seats used to be so compromised that's long gone. This truck has as much space as any big SUV or large family sedan, tons of room in the back seat. Adults, kids, whoever will sit back here and they'll all be comfortable. Now, the back seat is not particularly interesting, but there are a few items worth noting. For one thing, again, charge ports back here. You have household, you have USB, you have cigarette lighter, a lot of different charging opportunities in the back, which is really nice. You also have heated rear seats, as you can see, near those charge ports, which enhances your rear seat comfort. Now, one cool trick of the back seat in this truck is the seat bottom can be lifted up. You pull on this little tab, and then the seat comes up, allowing you to have a giant flat floor back here. There's a lot of potential use cases for this. If you want to throw a lot of stuff in your truck, but you don't want to put it in the bed because it might get stolen, here's a giant cargo space that's lockable that you can put it in. Or if your dog goes off running in the water, gets all wet and muddy, you don't want him on the seats, put the seat up, and then he has a lot of room to roam around while you drive home. There's a lot of benefits to that, and it's nice to see they've integrated that folding up seat bottom. Now, one other important item back here, the rear window automatically slides open. Unfortunately, you can't do it in the back seat. You got to do it in the front. This little button on the ceiling, you press it, and the rear window slides open to allow for more airflow in the truck, which is a cool feature. Of course, press it the other way, and it closes right up. And next up, we move on to the bed in the Raptor R, which in itself is not particularly exciting or interesting. Nothing especially unusual back here, although the tailgate does have some cool features worth pointing out. I've mentioned these in other F-150 reviews, but it's cool to see a ruler integrated into the top of the tailgate in case you're on a job site, you need to measure something. You forgot your tape measure? Well, here's a ruler where you can measure it in centimeters or inches. You also have vice clamps on the tailgate on either side, driver and passenger. So if you want to do some sawing or chopping or cutting on your tailgate, you can do that. And there's even a spot for pens. So you can basically use your tailgate like a table and measure stuff and cut stuff. And it's all pretty cool. One other neat feature of the tailgate is it makes it easy to get into the bed. There's a little step that comes out from the tailgate. As you can see, it pulls down and then there's a little railing that also comes out, you can push that up, extend it all the way, and then you have an easy climb into the bed. Just step into the step, grab the railing, and you're in. They make it very easy to get in back, as opposed to older trucks where it could be a little tough to climb inside. And finally, the last cool touch worth mentioning on the outside of this truck, I absolutely love the lighting, specifically these three marker lights at the top of the grill. These lights are mandated by the federal government on vehicles that are over a certain width, and the Raptor is. Now, most vehicles this wide just stick the lights on the roof, simple things in order to comply with the regulation, but Ford decided to make them cool and integrate them into the style and design of this truck. And so they took kind of a boring government regulation and made it part of this truck's look in front. And I think that that's a fantastic decision. And I love these three distinctive lights on Raptors that help separate this truck from a regular F-150. All right, driving the Raptor R. Now, first I wanna quickly apologize um, I had planned this big off-road adventure with the Raptor R, like I did with the Rivian about a year ago. Uh, I was going to test it out and throw it through some cool paces, but then I got sick, as you can probably hear, and now um, I can't really, I'm not really excited about the concept of spending the day off-roading, but I am excited about the concept of NyQuil. But it's really okay because the simple truth is that most people will spend most of their time with this truck on the pavement. And, and I've driven it quite a bit on the pavement, about 180 miles over the last few days. And there's a lot to say. First off, this truck is just plain mean. It's got so much power. Now I understand that the TRX has three more horsepower or whatever it is, two. 10 more pound feet, but the truth is both of these vehicles are absolutely comically overpowered and insanely fast and muscular and brawny and every similar adjective. You could also describe them as irresponsible and, and environmentally destructive. And you know, that hits home. I get the concept of wanting a car that's more environmentally friendly. I like electric cars. I understand what's happening to the planet. I see the benefits of that. But then you get in this and you... <laughs> 
And that's a pretty good argument in the other direction. So let's talk about the performance of this vehicle. Absolutely crazy. Like I said, very similar to TRX in terms of performance. I don't know which one accelerates faster. I don't think most people will ever actually be able to understand or feel the difference on a day-to-day -day basis driving these trucks on the streets. It's just not gonna happen. What you will notice is just an unbelievable roar from this truck and it power in all situations. Like I said, they retooled the supercharger, the pulley a little bit for the GT500, probably the mapping in order to allow for better low end torque. And you definitely feel that here. The GT500 has this amazing powertrain, but it is a little bit peaky as sports cars tend to be. This truck, you, you touch the throttle just a little bit and you feel it and you hear it and you're going. Now, the performance of this truck is so insane and so unbelievable that in truth, you gotta kinda know what you're doing. This truck is on 37 inch all-terrain tires. And earlier in the week when I had the truck, I absolutely floored it to go really fast as you do with one of these. And then I came up to a stoplight and I jammed on the brake kind of at the last second and the truck gets a little squirrely. All-terrain tires are not intended to stop a performance car. And so you kind of have to be a little bit aware of the fact that this isn't like a Hellcat. This isn't like a GT500. It has the powertrain, but there's a little bit of extra care you must exercise in order to drive this car effectively and not be dangerous. What I'm saying is this is an amazing truck in many ways, but it is no sports car. And frankly, it doesn't handle like a sports car either. Now, this truck handles way better than any other lifted truck or SUV, especially with the steering and the sport setting. The steering responses are very quick and there's less body roll around corners than you might expect but you cannot like plant your foot in a corner and expect it to just carry you through like a good modern sports car, like a C8. It's not gonna happen. This is a big lifted truck with not high performance street tires. It's not ready for like crazy maneuvers. And I know there's gonna be people who try things that this truck won't be able to do just because they think, oh, it can accelerate that fast. It can go over anything. It can do anything. Well, it, quite, it can't quite. Now, I wanna talk a bit about daily drivability um, because I think that that's something that people will be interested with these. This truck is certainly drivable every day in that it is very, com just like a regular Raptor, it is very comfortable, it is very relaxing, the sound system is great, the infotainment is great, the technology is great, so many nice benefits. You have a ton of room in here, you're very insulated from the outside world. The Raptor is such a great truck for all that stuff. Your drawbacks are gonna be twofold. Number one is size. If you live in a world where a full-size pickup truck is okay, suburbs, Texas, that sort of thing, fine. If you wanna try to make this work in a city, these trucks are huge. And so while it might have appeal to people who are like maybe not truck people, right now but they think a v8 raptor that sounds cool let me try it out you might be surprised at how unwieldy it can be the bigger problem is fuel economy this truck gets I, i've driven it like i said about 180 miles since i got it um 11.2 miles per gallon combined and by the way most of my driving was on the freeway um fuel economy is going to be a disaster now there's always people in the comment sections of videos like this that say well if you can afford to buy the truck you don't care what it costs to fill it up i don't agree with that i think a lot of people don't want to spend 120 dollars every time they fill up their truck and i think that will individually send some people towards a standard raptor and so that's the 2023 ford f-150 raptor r a hundred and ten thousand dollars 700 horsepower supercharged v8 10 miles per gallon in the city this is the peak of irresponsible excess and I love it. <laughs> and now it's time to give the new Raptor R a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 68 out of 100, which puts the Raptor R here, ahead of basically everything else, but tied with the Ram TRX. Frankly, I think that's right. These trucks have a lot of similarities, including horsepower, torque, performance, and just general ethos. Probably the biggest difference is price, although in these days of dealer markups, it's hard to even assess that. Frankly, buy whichever one of these trucks suits you best. Whichever brand you like better, whichever is easier to find, you won't be disappointed, except at the gas pump.